the problem, you know, maybe I wasn't responsible enough with it. Maybe it ended in the ditch one time, but not all the way in the ditch, just enough that it cracked the radiator without me knowing. And then it overheated for months as soon as I turned it on and the head gasket blew. And here we are. I, I have never had a car as nice as that. And it's probably on purpose. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lacey J. I'm an entrepreneur who started a social media agency at age 22. Weird, I know. I've been niching it down and building it up over the last 11 years and a long 11 years they have been. Being on social media so much is hard on my and my team's mental health, so we work to find routines, balance, and focus on ethics that keep us showing up authentically online. If you manage social media accounts and you feel confused, unfocused, or straight up wackadoo, welcome to the club. We meet here once a week. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm so happy you're here. Um, I've brought a special guest today. I've got Miss Justine here today. Justine, how are you doing? Great. I am uh, equally excited and nervous. Yes, it's the right. It's the right feeling to have. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel a little amped. Mm -hmm. Had a my, good amped. My mom says if you're not nervous, you don't care. You exactly. Know? So, mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I care a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Justine works at Spry, and I, I'm going to kind of just go into, I, I like to call these segments one social media manager to another, okay? So let's just kind of dive into what got you into the industry, what you like about it, what you don't. So let's, let's start with how you ended up here. How did you end up doing any sort of social media management? So the first real social media managing I did on my own at all was uh, at a coffee bar. Mm. And it was after I had moved home after a big relationship blow up mm -hmm. and I was trying to, you know, find my footing again. And I had all these skills from my previous life that I just wasn't using. And I saw that this said coffee bar was really lacking in their social media presence. And I thought, you know what? I got some tools under my apron, not my belt, my apron. <laughs> I like um, it. Mm -hmm. And I think I can help them get the community here. Uh, I can make them look more attractive online. So and did you bring it up to them? I did. Really? You pitched mm -hmm. yourself. I, I like did. that. I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hustler. We like, we like a woman with initiative. <laughs> I have that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I got my start. And um, that was really my crash course in social media. Mm -hmm. I was all on my own. I had to figure it all out. Learn as you go. Learn as I went. Mm -hmm. What platforms did you work on originally there then? Just Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. They weren't big into anything else. We we thought about doing Snapchat because that was really big at the time, mm -hmm. but never got into it. It's nice to stick with the solid options yeah. when yeah. you can, I think. Yeah. Okay, so how long have you been doing some social media management then? Um, let's see. I think I originally started dabbling in like 2014. Okay. And it's what year? It's been eight years. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. With breaks in between. Yes. Um, did lots of graphic design in there. Um, so not consecutively, but mm -hmm. on and off. Um, what for you is some of the best part about doing social media management? There's so many aspects to I our know. job. There's so many different <laughs> skill sets and avenues. So like what to you, what's the best part of doing social media management? <sighs> this may end up being like a three tiered response. Okay, I'm here for um, it. The first part you and I have kind of already had a conversation about it's seeing how far you can push yourself mm. and seeing what you can learn in a short amount of time. Um, yes. You you really have an opportunity to impress yourself. Mm -hmm. And like was said on a previous podcast, it's it's learning. This whole job. This whole job. Mm -hmm. And I love learning. I'm a mm -hmm. huge geek. Um, the more I can know, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, probably my favorite aspect about the job. Second offshoot of that um learning how to create content mm -hmm. for these companies what do their viewers want to see and then offshoot of that just creating content mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it is i just love creating 
So so part of it is is just stretching that creativity muscle, you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> then then the other piece, it, it is such an interesting aspect to be able to take a brand or an organization or a product and try to, in such a short amount of time, weeks, learn the core values of that company learn the audience and then like pretend to be them it's like kind of messed up what we do we're like catfishers we are we're yes. professional catfishers we get paid totally. for it to pretend to be people online totally. yeah it's it's a special opportunity it is and it's you're awesome. right yeah i it's it's the best when we can impress ourselves you mm-hmm. know because sometimes i mean you've got a client that's a, another client that's a coffee shop and so that's something that you feel really comfortable in yes but then we've got this like tech company that's doing weather insights that you've never experienced anything like that before no. and in a few weeks you had to learn enough about it to be able to create content that their audience would recognize as coming from them yeah And buy it. (laughs) Yes. Fake it till you make it. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. So what about the other side of it? What's the worst part? I mean, there's so many frustrating things about social media management. So to you, what's the worst part about being a social media manager? I really struggle with this because uh, I... (laughs) My brain says people, but <laughs> oh, it's not, it's not, it's, mm-hmm. it's certain people. Okay. Um, people that kind of hijack your campaign mm. or your post that you're putting out from your heart for good. Um, so like people who are on social media responding to content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trolls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm a very thinky, feely, warm, mushy person. Mm-hmm. And so I really have to put boundaries up um when I see stuff like that and I really have to kind of (laughs) do some psychoanalysis really quick and just check myself and not take something personally yeah not take something personally and not let it get to me and ruin my day Mm -hmm. um because it when you see so much of it Mm -hmm. it can be hard it can be hard affect you Mm -hmm. so that's really the only thing Mm -hmm. I literally love every other aspect Mm -hmm. of the job just the debbie downers yeah the people online who know nothing about it and just feel like their opinion needs to be heard Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is definitely a hard part and i do think it it takes a level of of boundary and like wall building around your heart to make sure that you don't take things personally because it is our human nature is to kind of uh, focus in on the negative Mm -hmm. Um, we'll focus in on the negative more than we'll focus in on the positive, and that's sad. It, it takes training yourself totally to not take it personally. Yeah, negativity mm-hmm. always weighs more, mm-hmm. and it's easier to grasp onto. Mm-hmm. Sure. An interesting thing I find with that is that it's easier for me to do that on uh, projects, like to to not worry about trolls and not take it personally on projects that I feel less connected to. Mm-hmm. You know, in that case, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm just taking on the protective role of the client, and it's my job to just hide that stuff quickly, delete it quickly, because I want to insulate the client from having to deal with it. But the closer it is to my heart, the more I fixate on yes. um, on when it doesn't impress everyone. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, spot on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's talk about a client that you have that maybe you love working on and why. This is another hard one because <laughs> I love them all for different reasons. Mm. Um, Probably what makes you a good social media manager. <laughs> uh-huh. Maybe, mm-hmm. or I'm just a little nuts. I don't know. Uh, right now, I think it's Storm Geo. Mm-hmm. If you would have asked me that a month ago, it would have been Brood Awakenings. Mm-hmm. So this one that's so complicated and so outside your normal behavior, why is it something that you're feeling so, that you're enjoying so much? Because it's more rewarding. Mm. I'm, again, <laughs> I am I feel like I am learning every single time I have to get in there and create content. Mm-hmm. And it feels like I haven't reached the ceiling yet. Mm-hmm. Whereas maybe other clients where I'm well-versed in, um, I really have to dig to kind of pull out content sometimes because I feel like I might get stale myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I Storm Geo right now for me is just 
kind of this well Mm -hmm. (laughs) of content Mm -hmm. that I don't really see an end yet. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting. Because you haven't mastered it. You know, there there are so many avenues and niches that you can learn and get into. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I think part of the reason a lot of people go into social media management is because they maybe get bored easily. (laughs) And so having so many different uh, companies that you've got to learn and get into it gives keeps your attention. Yes. It does. It keeps your attention. 100%. And if it gets too easy and too methodical, it's not it's not as rewarding, mm-hmm. not nearly as rewarding. Even if you can knock it out of the park with every yeah. post on mm-hmm. one, it's not as rewarding. No, they have to work for it very hard. Mhm. Um is there a platform that you like let's let's start with personally for your own personal social media what platform do you enjoy spending the most time on if you would have asked me this like 10 years ago I would have said MySpace (laughs) (laughs) how how was your um did you code your page pretty well absolutely yes yes I was like the coding geek that Uh all of my friends went to Mm -hmm. can you add this like falling hearts onto my profile (laughs) (laughs) I could see you as being that person now it's right everybody everybody like low-key reaches out to you could you please um make this graphic I've got something coming I have an idea could you do it it's the same thing you've never left this. yeah never it's yeah the, I think that I was just born to like make things for people how much did your fun. top eight stress you out <laughs> honestly not very because I was a huge nerd and I only had like three or four really close friends so, so a lot it was of the easy, time it was simple I would code my top eight to only be four shut up mm-hmm. I didn't even know that was possible oh yeah wow yeah so my space queen I'm like, oh, um, I don't have eight friends, so I'm going to make it four. <laughs> uh, yeah, but man, uh, coding, music, photos, like that was addiction for my teenage oh, how mind. Fun. That was awesome. Okay, so fast forward 10 years. How fast forward now? 10 years. Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty much always been Instagram just because it was so photo based and I do a lot of photography. Mm hmm. I was super into it when it came out, mm-hmm. and it hasn't quite left my heart yet. Um, I mean, it's but, not as good as it used to be. Have you ventured much onto TikTok yet? Not really. Mm-hmm. I I had a little stint a couple months ago where I kind of got sucked into the TikTok hole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just as a consumer? Just as a consumer, mm-hmm. yeah. And I actually, I don't know if I've ever had any accounts where I've had to make TikToks yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that would be fun if I got a client that wanted to take yeah, out material. F- I feel like we're really close to that pivot point. Mm-hmm. You know, it like what we did at Spry when when Instagram started to become popular is we didn't start offering it as a service until it was for sure a viable option for small business to see a return. You totally. know, and so TikTok is getting close to that point where businesses can really start, you know, getting an audience and and um, gaining a fan base from it. But it's it's interesting to have to, I'm nervous about it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I'm nervous about having to pivot and, and incorporate a brand new platform, especially because the last time that we pivoted with Instagram, this team was smaller, and mm-hmm. so it was kind of easier to just play instead mm-hmm. of trying to set standards and, and processes. So I'm sure. a little nervous for when we've got to get TikTok as a main core service offering. Well, I think we'll all be in the same boat. <laughs> Hopefully we can just figure it out together. Floundering, right? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a professional flounderer. <laughs> We're going to have to. <laughs> okay. Um, from your perspective, what kind of... Um, what kind of insecurities do you have working in this industry? You know, what kind of pops up that maybe sometimes creates maybe a little bit of self-doubt that you have when you're working within your... You are so interesting to me because you have so many different skill sets that feed so well into social media that uh, I'm just curious. Is there any piece of it that feels like takes the most work for you? Yeah. um, I would say... That is hard. I am mm-hmm. by nature a very critical person of myself. Really? Yes. So 
anytime I'm creating anything, I'm like, perfect, 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 it has to be perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> because graphics and art are probably so close to my heart, anytime I'm putting out any kind of content that's mm-hmm. a graphic or it's something that I have made with my hands, I'm pretty insecure about it. Really? I'm always wondering if, okay, I think this looks good, but is everyone mm-hmm. else going to think it looks good? Because mm-hmm. it's just me in my house, mm-hmm. in front of my computer. You know, I don't I don't really have anyone to bounce my stuff on, bounce mm-hmm. my stuff off of, bounce <laughs> my stuff on. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. <laughs> day in and day out. Uh-huh. Collaboration, so, it's so yeah, fun. A little painful, but. In my head. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would say that. Mm-hmm. It's it's my it's my art, in a way. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of putting it out there. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you like working in kind of the team scenario that like we have set up? Because there's so many people, and especially people who kind of listen into this podcast and consume this content that are freelancers or solopreneurs doing stuff on their own. And you've been in that position mm-hmm. before, where you've been responsible for social media projects all by yourself. So what's the difference? What's what's some of the pros and cons with doing stuff yourself versus having a team to work with? Hmm. I can't think of any cons off the bat. Really? The team. <laughs> because I've been, I've been solo for so long and it was so refreshing to be a part of a team and have this knowledge pool and the support if mm-hmm. I needed it. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I've never experienced that before. And I always brag to my husband about how cool it is to work with all these other geeks. <laughs> like <laughs> in the best way possible, yes. you know, like uh-huh. I feel at home. Normally I'm just out there on my own geeking out doing what I do mm-hmm. um, without buddies yeah. around. And it's it's so great. Mm-hmm. I can't think of any cons. I'm sorry. So one of the things that I think is is a pro of doing stuff on your own is that you get to like really maintain quality control. Um, I think overall I'm a fairly controlling person. I like being in charge. And so having ultimate control and responsibility over content coming up means that I will take responsibility for everything that happens mm-hmm. and um, and I get to manage that and I'm good at stuff, you know? Yeah. And so it is, to me, it is a little bit harder in a team scenario to other people are good in their own ways and it's hard for me sometimes to not want people to do things the way I would do them versus let them kind of blossom into the way they would do something. Um, it's a challenge for me. It's a it's worthwhile because there's no way that that I could on my own have the level of impact that we have as a team to be able to help and work with so many different companies. If I tried to control mm-hmm. it, then we it would limit the amount of impact that we could have. Yeah, um, absolutely. I I feel you there. Mm-hmm. I also have that little control freak inside of me. Um, but I think you know, not being the head of a company. Mm-hmm. It's easier for me to put it away. Yeah, but even I think about like you'll make a graphic template and then mm-hmm. hand off the template and mm-hmm. then it's up to somebody else mm-hmm. to like put the other yeah. elements in and you probably see it and you're like, oh, I might have done that a little <laughs> differently or I might I have mean, done this a little differently. Sometimes, but uh-huh. that's how my brain is trained. Mm-hmm. It's to tra- kind of let it go and let somebody else. Well, to see those oh, I see. things where maybe like that could have been scooched over a little or mm-hmm. that could have been bigger, but... For me, it's cool to see people using my templates. Mm, mm-hmm. It's that is rewarding. So, mm-hmm. pretty bad. Um, do you have any ideas of like what you want out of this career? What are the what are the things that over the next few years, as you're working in this career, that you want to really develop within yourself that you think is going to be a benefit for you and the people that you work with? Hmm. Well, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Um, I think right now my goals are just really honing in on writing and my versatility. And I'm hoping to get to the next level because right now I'm just kind of admin. Mm -hmm. My role has kind of morphed. It happens. In the the time I've been here. Yes. Uh (laughs) Um, but, you know, I'd like to have 
some clients all of my own mm-hmm. under my wing and kind of get to be that control freak that we were talking yes. about, mm-hmm. um, that would be super fun. So that's a goal that I do have. And to get there, I feel that I need to really work on my organization and my long-term thinking, really hone that in. Mm-hmm. Um because when you're an admin, it's really easy to go week to week yes. and just knock out content and mm-hmm. blah, 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 mm-hmm. done. Um, but to get to a higher level and do like long term campaigns and really think about the whole structure of a what a client wants and needs for their business, uh, it takes a lot more sitting down, planning, thinking about it, mm-hmm. um, getting into that meditative state and just. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that's that's what I'd like for myself and that's where I see myself going. Okay. Um last question. Is there anything that just drives you nuts? Okay. <laughs> so like, you know, you're working on your Facebook content, you're working on your Instagram content, you're working on you're trying to boost a LinkedIn post. Like, what is the task or few tasks that um make you your scr- your skin crawl? What what drives you crazy? Mm-hmm. I'll share mine while you think. Instagram story layers. Like, why? <laughs> Holy crap. Why? Yes. When I, how come I can't, you know, copy and paste one? How come when I touch it, it reorders the order and I have to move it and bring it all back? Or I mean, it's the most frustrating thing in the world to me, Instagram story layers. Okay. I can't stand it. Okay. That, I I agree. Yeah. That's, that's probably tied for number one. Okay. with mine mm-hmm. that is very infuriating it is as a graphic designer too like i really like that they have those guides that'll like snap yes. in okay middle mm-hmm. center perfect helpful awesome helpful why the f <laughs> are you moving yes. all weird and putting yourself behind this gif and oh my god it's horrible it's horrible uh-huh awful my pet peeve is <laughs> when i'm going to boost and in uh sorry not instagram a facebook post okay mm-hmm. that interface horrible horrible meant to and trick the, you the audience's <laughs> yes. interface mm-hmm. meta what are you doing mm-hmm. what are you doing it's meant to trick you it's meant to trick us <laughs> it's awful it it's is. so bad mm-hmm. uh, just just make it seamless please mm-hmm. just figure it out i i don't know if you need a new ux designer but I'll just hop in there and learn it. I know. Just give us just, a little, just let like my space. Give us a little yes. place to code in and we'll be fine. <laughs> so awful. Yeah. Facebook isn't the most user friendly mm-hmm. for social media managers. I, I keep don't feel. I keep saying I'd like to I'd like to pay fifteen dollars a month for every business page to have access to like real s- customer support. Mm-hmm. You know? Imagine the funds that could come in with fifteen dollars a month coming from every business page. Yeah. And what could be done with that? Give me a Amazing. give me a real support person. Yes, necessary. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, I'm now fine. that we're sweating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the yeah. time to come in here and let me grill you a little bit. It was fun. I don't do you have, have fun? any grill marks, so I think I'm all right. Did I do? A, did I scare you away? Are you happy? <laughs> no. Okay. No, I would do it again. Okay. Good. I would do it again. Thank okay. you. It was mm-hmm. fun. <laughs> well, thank you, those of you listening. We're grateful for you. We hope you have a good rest of your week. That you kick some butt at your content this week and that instagram story layers don't annoy you too much (laughs) but if they do know that we are over here banging our heads against the wall at the same time we'll talk to you soon (laughs) Bye. bye social media with Lacey j is brought to you by spry social media marketing edited and produced by chad Hinman, and executive produced by Lacey j font